welcome back to my channel so nice to see you here now i got a lot of questions about mako what are the best watercolors for beginners i don't know what to buy i know there are so many options and i feel like the past couple of months there are so many different brands popping out of nowhere that i just can't keep up with and that's why in this video i'm going to test out the top 10 most popular watercolor sets that are between 5 to 45 dollars i will test them on student and professional watercolor paper just to see if there's a huge difference and we'll also talk about the pros and the cons so you know exactly Exactly what you buy. I also got a lot of questions about how you can figure out how to mix the perfect color because even if you have the most beautiful colors in your set it's really important to understand color theory and even though I made a video about how to avoid muddy colors it's very short and very intense I must say and before you give up and feel super frustrated I would recommend to check out Skillshare which I'm super happy that they're partnering with me again because I just believe in this platform. I found amazing videos about how to mix colors, how to control water, and even how to figure out what colors work together to create a very uh, beautiful composition and harmony in your painting. And the best part is that they go really deep into the topic. So it's not a quick video on YouTube, it's really in depth. And I, I love learning on Skillshare. If you don't know what Skillshare is, it's basically an online learning community for creatives with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, lifestyle and more. I also got a lot of questions about how do I sell my art, how do I scan, print it and even how do I find the right price for it. So if you want to learn more about that, you can learn everything about that on Skillshare. So if you want to test it out, check out the link in the description box down below to get full access to the premium content for two months for free. Of course, I will link all the classes I just mentioned in the description box down below so you can check it out and just start learning. For now, let's go ahead and swatch some paint, shall we? The first set in the test is the Camlin watercolor set for artists. It comes with 18 different colors in tubes and I think you can get it on Amazon India for about $6. For the test, I'll be using Britannia watercolor paper by Hanley Mulia and 100% cotton paper by Winsor Newton and also Arsh. Now, the first thing I noticed that these colors had a really strong smell. I'm not sure if it's just my batch of paints, but after swatching the colors for a few minutes, I got a huge headache. I don't know why. Let me know in the comments if it's just me or if you have experienced something similar because the smell was really strong. Other than that, the colors look really vibrant and pretty transparent except for the yellowish colors. And it was also easy for me to blend the colors and the paint was blooming nicely as well. One of the downsides is the strong smell that I mentioned. And if you're a beginner, I think it can be a little bit tricky to figure out how much paint you actually need. With watercolors, you want to paint with thin transparent layers. And if you have tubes and you're a beginner, you might tend to use it as acrylics and use it really thickly. Plus, you also need to get a mixing palette first before you can start painting. Now, if you look at both charts, you will notice that the colors look slightly more even and vibrant on the 100% cotton paper. That's why it's key to use the right watercolor paper if you want your paint to really shine. The next set in the test is the Winsor Newton Cotman set that you can get for about $13. This small pocket set comes with 12 different colors in half pans, which I always recommend beginners to get because it's just way easier to handle when you're just starting out. They are also inside a plastic box where you can mix the colors right away. These colors are slightly less vibrant compared to the first set, but they are a little bit more transparent. The only downside here is that the phthalo blue saturation is a little weak in the beginning, so it takes some time to pick up as much pigment as possible. But everything else is very easy to activate. I like the color choice because you get warm and cool colors that allow you to mix a lot of different colors from very bright to more muted colors. And as you can also see, the colors look a lot more evenly dried on the cotton paper compared to the cellulose paper on the left side. Next in the test, we have the Van Gogh, or Van, Hoog, Van Gogh pocket set that you can get for about $16. It comes with 15 different colors in half pens inside a plastic box with mixing areas as well. It offers a variety of different colors that you can use to mix any color you like. 
The color choice is also similar to the Winsor Newton Cotman set, but the colors look a lot more vibrant and slightly more opaque, especially the yellows and the greens, but that's okay. The paint was blooming nicely and it was easy to blend two colors together. And if you compare them on the two different papers, you'll see that, again, the colors look a lot more vibrant on the cotton paper. The next set in the test is by Arteza that you can get for about $18. It comes with 12 different colors in half pens inside a metal box. And I must say the color chart is really misleading. Lemon and cadmium yellow look the same on the picture, but the rest was really way off. Even though the colors looked vibrant, they were a lot more opaque compared to the previous sets, because you could see how the black line was covered in the paint, especially on the cellulose paper. The reason why I like to use transparent colors is because it's much easier to mix bright and clean colors and also layer them nicely on top of each other. What can happen when you mix rather opaque colors is that the mixture might end up looking dull and muddy. The color choice was slightly different as well. The cool red, blue and yellow were similar to magenta, cyan and yellow. This can be great if you want to paint something colorful and you really want to have bold and really shining colors. But they were also a lot more opaque which could lead to more dull colors and a hard time painting in layers. Nevertheless, the paint was blooming nicely and it was easy to blend the colors together. Next, we have a watercolor set by Sennelier called La Petite that you can get for about $20. It comes with 12 different colors in a plastic case where you can mix the colors directly inside the box. And I must say the box looks really beautiful. The light blue color was slightly weak as well, but the rest of the colors looks really vibrant and almost completely transparent. We have a variety of cool and warm colors, the paint bloomed nicely, and it was also easy to blend everything smoothly. As a side note, the binder that is used in Saint-Nilier paints is honey, so if you are vegan, this might not be something for you. And as you can see, the colors looked even more saturated and vibrant on the cotton paper. Next, we have the Prima Marketing Watercolor Confection Set with the classic colors that you can get for about $22. It comes with 12 different colors in half pens inside a metal box. What I noticed here immediately is the way the colors were arranged. Usually the order is yellow, red, blue, green and so on, but here it was rather the opposite. Also, the names of each color were very specific. You could find more abstract names like pinky, ice blue and cocoa to more specific names like red, orange, yellow and green. I think what they were going for is magenta yellow sign system next to yellow, red, blue, which I appreciate because it kind of gives you the option to mix lots of very vibrant colors if that's what you're looking for. Compared to the other sets, you can clearly see how different the reds and blues are. They rather look like neon colors, so I think if you really just want to paint something super colorful and bold, these colors could work great for you. But if you paint more landscapes and nature in general, these might be a little bit too bright. There are also gray, black and white, which I don't think it's super necessary, but it's just my personal preference. The colors look a little bit more opaque, they were blooming nicely and I could also easily blend everything together. The dark blue color was granulating, meaning you could see some pigments gathering together on the paper. And when I tested the blooming of the colors, you could see blue particles. Next on the list is the Windsor Newton blue box that you can get for about $25. It comes with 12 half pans inside a metal box. Here the colors were slightly different compared to the pocket box, such as the blues and the browns. And instead of the white, there was a black color. Again, I also had the same issue with making the blue super saturated as if the color didn't want to release all the pigments, so the light blue was really light in the end. But other than that, the colors look still pretty vibrant and seem transparent. Next, we have the Daniel Smith Essential set with 6 colors that you can get for about $28. The colors look really vibrant and super transparent. They bloom and blend nicely. I really love working with them, but the downside is that this set comes in tubes and you only have three main colors to mix everything else. Unless, of course, you buy the second set with more colors. 
So here you will really need to practice color mixing to know exactly what paint and how much of it you need to mix a specific color. You'll also need to have an additional mixing palette. I think if you really want to learn how to mix certain colors and you want to invest in high quality paint, this could be something for you. But again, if you feel this would be too overwhelming and you don't really know how to use tubes in general, I would rather stick to watercolor pans with 12 different colors until you're more familiar with how to mix certain colors and how to really work and get the most out of your paints. But the colors were super vibrant, transparent, and I personally love working with them. As I said, I like to have a limited color palette because it's less overwhelming for me. If you have too many colors and you randomly choose anything, you might end up with muddy colors. So here you need to be more conscious about what you're doing, which I think is really great if you want to practice color mixing. As you can see, I tried my best to mix the same colors, but they were slightly different because the ratio of the specific colors were slightly different. Next on the list, we have another set by the brand Van Gogh. It comes with 12 different colors in half pans and inside a metal box. Here you also have cool and warm yellows, reds, blues, greens, browns, and a black and white color. The colors look pretty much the same compared to the pocket set. They are vibrant, some colors are slightly more opaque, but they bloom and blend also very nicely. I personally never use white to mix colors, so for me, I'd rather have this spot for another color. But if you want to make certain colors more pastel-like and more opaque, then maybe this is something you actually want. Last but not least, we have the Schminke Academy watercolor set that you can get for about $44. It comes with 12 half pens in a metal box. This was actually my very first set that I bought over 10 years ago when I started to play around with watercolors. By the way, this set is new. My old one was just way too disgusting. <laughs> Here you also have cool and warm yellows, reds, blues, greens, browns, and a black color. The colors are pretty vibrant. Some of them were slightly more opaque than others, and they bloom and blend nicely. As I said, when I bought this set, when I upgraded to proper watercolors, it opened a whole new world to me because through this set, I realized what a difference quality paint can make. Now, all in all, I can say that you can't really see a huge, huge difference between all those different sets, except for the Prima Marketing watercolor set with the magenta and sign and the use of gray and white. So this is, um, this is one that really stood out. So with this set, it might be a little bit difficult to create more natural and landscape paintings because the colors are just so colorful and you really need to tone down the colors by mixing more colors into the mixture. But if it's something that you're looking for, maybe this is perfect for you. The Camlin Arteza and the Watercolor Confections Classic set also don't really have information about what pigments they use or how light fast they are on the package, meaning you don't really know how long they will last exposed to sunlight. So if you would like to be really in control of what you're using and also be able to possibly sell your original artwork, I would either do some research or avoid those because you never know what to expect unless of course you test it out and experiment it for yourself. Also, the downside is that you can't really replace the colors when you run out of anything, so you might have to look into other brands or find something else that you can use instead. Same goes for the Senni... 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 Aquarel La Petite. You also can't really exchange the colors, but the set is still really beautiful. Another important thing that is really important to me is that the watercolors are transparent because I really like working in layers and create glazes, so if the colors are just too opaque, it's, it might be difficult. And if you mix opaque colors together, they also can create a very muddy and dull version. So you also want to look into that. Now there are pigments that are naturally more opaque, but if you don't have any information whatsoever on the package, you don't really know what to expect. And I really like to be like, I don't, I want to know what's inside. So if you buy something that is super cheap or something low quality and you notice that everything is opaque, that's not a good sign. And we noticed that when we tested out the very, very cheap watercolors that there had so many fillers and it was just a nightmare. Now the transparency varies from set to set and from color to color, but what they all had in common is the fact that they looked a lot better on professional watercolor paper. And this brings me to the importance of watercolor paper. 
I think as a beginner, you tend to focus on the best watercolor set that you can get and only invest a little bit into the watercolor paper because it feels like it's not that important, but it's, it's very important because even if you have super quality watercolor paint and you use very cheap watercolor paper, they can't really shine. So you kind of have to find a middle ground. So what I would personally do, I would look into my budget and invest a lot into the paper and the rest I would use for brushes and then the paint. Because if you have a very expensive watercolor set but very, very bad paper, it's like literally a waste of money because you can really get the full potential out of them. So don't feel like you have to get the most expensive watercolor set whatsoever because you don't. And sometimes it just really depends on your budget, where you're from and what set you feel most drawn to. Let me know in the comments below if you have tried any of those sets and what your experience was, what did you like, what you didn't, so we can learn from each other and everyone else can read up on your comment. I really hope it was helpful. Don't forget to check out the link in the description box down below to get your two months free trial on Skillshare. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!